That sounded terrible, but it is a fairly late stream. Hello and welcome to the stream. Uh, that was some patter before the stream was ready, or before Twitch told me the stream was up and running. Okay, earlier today we did some stuff with the ellipses. That looked so horrible that I've wiped it out and I've created a new section in bcellipses.txt. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so today we're going to be doing something a little bit different, or I guess tonight we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, that is, instead of trying to be really clever with all of these formulas, we're just going to sort of uh, map out some relations and see what information we can get out of them, which I have to warn you in advance, may be no information whatsoever. So let's go ahead and create an ellipse. Two foci and then a point on the ellipse, so we'll make this our foci. Uh, this our foci, and I think this is going to be the same ellipse we drew earlier, so it's not really super exciting. Oh, come on. Why can't I get snapped to? There we go. Let's make sure these points are exactly, and whoa, that's the ellipse. Okay, so now what we're going to do here is we are going to uh, start doing some furious renaming. Um, we're going to call this, we're going to rename this to point F. And the magic's coming in just a second. Rename this to point G, the second foci. Um, we name this to point B, and we don't have a point here, but we're going to put one, and we're going to call that point O for the origin. Don't really need that, but it's kind of nice to have, actually. Okay, and we're finally going to create a point here that we're going to that we are going to call point A. Okay, so um, so what's the magic that we're going to be doing here? Um, let me. We don't. We don't. I don't care what it's named, we just want to show it though. Okay, so what are we going to be doing here that was so exciting and so different from last time is, um, let's see, a couple of things. First of all, we're going to have a note section here which says, you know, F is the F and G are foci. That's not the exciting part. Then we're going to have a section here called derivations where we just get the, uh, w where we derive the equations but we don't, actually I don't know if we need to do that, hang on. Um, yeah, we don't actually need to do that. And then I'm going to call these um, rels for relationships. And then just to make sure that I can actually do this, um, this is actually not a true condition, but we I want to make sure that we can actually do this. And again, probably Mathix is, ooh, shiny. Uh, Mathix is going to be not insufficient for us because it sucks. Um, and I think there's a way to reset session actually, it, but that's okay. So I just want to make sure this is actually works. This is not a. This is not anything deep here. Okay. So the first thing I sort of figured out. Uh, oh. Non-atomic. Wait. Alrighty, so how did append work over here? You need a list followed by a list. That should be how it works here. Okay, let me try this. Okay. Um, so why non-atomic Oh, did it say non-atomic expression expected? Yeah, and the problem here is we need to actually merge this and this and this. We need to merge them. Okay, so now this should work. And there's nothing exciting about that at all. So what we're going to do here, though, is we're going to append rails one at a time, and we're actually going to make some sense out of the uh, the relations that we're adding. So this is all the relations that are true of this diagram with occasionally we'll have, a, you know, um, extra information like F and G or focuses. I don't think we need to mention A and B or the uh, semi and major and semi minor axes. But now instead of putting in all these silly, uh, well, we can still put in silly arrows and stuff. Um, but we can say things like, you know, len OF to mean the length of OF. Len OG to mean the length of OG, and so forth and so on. 
So the first question is we know that this point, um, okay, already a little bit floundering here. Um, now, yeah, we can. I think we can safely say this. Let's see. Um, we don't really want to rename it. We just kind of want to give it a better caption. Okay. So A equals AO. That's that's cool. And over here we can say B equals. Um, so nothing deep here. This is just more or less the definition of of how points are defined here. So not a problem. There's no space there, is there? God damn it. See, this is where I get really caught up. Good, there's no space there. Okay, so, so far, so good. We have A equals AO, B equals OB, not a problem. Um, and I guess I'm gonna say, I know, I know this is gonna be a bad idea. I'm gonna say F equals FO. So all we're doing is we're def saying that basically, we're just defining uh, some points and some values. Okay, so now what we know here is that the distance from B to, and this, by the way, so this is probably the first thing we're going to be saying is len OF, okay, and we're going to be real careful here, um, short names for some lengths, okay, so this will be a Pendrell's, um, len OF, meaning the length from OF equals equals F, that's just our definition. Len O B equal equal B, Len O A equal equal A. Uh, again, these are just names that we're giving them. There's no there's no deep significance here. And now the first thing that's actually um, um, oops uh, distance to foci is equal. So this is the first time we're going to be saying something that's like vaguely interesting, and that's going to be. Uh, Len OF equal equal len OG. That is, we're just saying that this length from O to F is equal to O to G. Not a huge deal. Okay, so now we need to start saying things like, um, I hope the word norm is defined here. Um, let's see, you gotta be a little bit careful. Um, we want to say the distance from, oh well, let's, let's just go ahead and say the distance from A. Uh, uh, we already know that the distance from A to F plus the distance from A to G is equal to 2A. That's the, um, that's the uh, um, parameter of the eclipse, uh, of the ellipse. Uh, but let's see if we can say that in, an, in a better way. Um, I think we might be okay with just saying note that. Oh, I'm sorry. One other big, big thing that I haven't put on here. We're basically given an ellipse with A, B, and one other thing that we really, it's very important. Um, and that is, at uh, some point, we don't know which one, but it's going to be called P. Um, actually, I probably don't care what it's named, but the caption definitely has to say P equals X comma Y. And that is, um, that is the, so the givens, kind of the givens, are A, the semi-major axis, B, the semi-minor axis, and some point P on the ellipse. This could be any point, any X and Y on the ellipse. There are several things we know. Um, we know that the distance from, you know, of P to this plus this is 2A. We're going to go ahead and establish that the, uh, that the distance, um, I think we already did that, so we can just say 2A is sum of disks for any point. Okay? So, um, Okay, so we can say append rels. I'm not actually crazy about this append rels thing. Maybe we need to get rid of it somehow. Um, and I guess in theory we could have just commas or something between them, but let's for right now just just do it this way. Um, so the sum of distance for any point, and that's going to say that um, norm of x y minus f zero. I'm pretty sure this is going to work, but I'll double check it plus the norm of xy minus minus f0, which I think we maybe want to specify here, um, is always going to be equal to 2 times a. That's for any point, any x and y on the ellipse. But let's go ahead and be a little bit more 
let's be a little bit more freaking obnoxious here and say g is equal to uh, negative f0. Curious, do we want to put spaces in here? Do we not want to put spaces in here? No, I think we do want to put spaces in here. Okay. All right, so g is equal to negative f0. That's, that's, not, a, uh, that's not a problem here. Um, by symmetry, we're good with that. But that just makes it clear here that um, um, norm of x, y. So let's just see what this does, actually. I'm sort of curious. That's a sort of ugly looking thing to put in there, but it is uh, correct. Um, okay. Absolute value. All right. So uh, let's see. Um, I, I, I'm not sure we need the absolute value because, um, well, I guess x could be less than f. Um, so I guess this is correct. It's ugly, but it's correct. So now let's get all of our sort of appends going together here. Sorry, escape W. Control A, Control V. One big happy list of appends. Okay. Um, so now the question is what, what is, what is so useful about this? Um, and I don't know right now. And the idea is in theory with all these relations, oops, we can derive any formula we want. We don't have enough relations to do that yet, but ultimately having all these relations Not what we expected. Oh, do we need to do rels equals? Oh, shit. Because rels is immutable. Okay. All right, I'm going to try something that's very ugly. I'm going to see if we can just put comments inside of, um, inside of a list. So it's going to be basically this is one thing that we have, one thing that we know. Uh, this is another thing that we know. And by the way, if you think I know what I'm doing, oh, you are sadly mistaken. And then over here at the very end, we do need this. But let's see if this is going to, I don't know if this is going to allow us to actually compile. I mean, you know, if it's going to just be like, you can't put, do that inside of a Um, let's see. Oh, I'll be damned. You can. Okay. Um, so the theory here is we could, um, we could solve wells for f and this won't work, but I mean, in theory, we could do this. Oh, 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 oh. No, 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 no. So this is not, we're trying to basically get F in terms of A, which we should be able to do. Well, actually in terms of A and B, but um, let's, okay, let's see what the words, what solve does. Um, let's solve F in terms of A and B over the reals. I don't think that's gonna work. F is not a quantified, yep, okay. Um, I mean, the idea here is F is not a quantified system of equations. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's, that's not what we want. So the, the idea here is we want to get, basically say that, can, what can you tell me about F in terms of A and B? And you can solve this third equation to actually get that. So, um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, yeah, we 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 need real. We need the the rels. Um, I don't think this is going to work. 
Ah, uh, it's not a quantified system of equations. Okay, okay, okay. You're right. Okay, so I think we want to say solve rels for f. Over the reals, I don't think that's going to actually matter. So what are we going to get here? What? Not a quantified system of equations and inequalities. Yo mama. Yes, it is. Um... Okay, so the only problem I'm sort of seeing here is that we maybe have uh, too many uh, brackets because we're kind of uh, we're kind of uh, putting everything in brackets. So I think we want maybe flatten rels and see what that does. Okay, that's bad because um, it didn't work, but at least it didn't give us an error message. So now let's try just solving it without putting the condition that it is. Uh, Still no. Okay, so reduce. Uh, that's not. That's not how you spell reduce. Reduce. Okay. Um. That's one solution. Now, can I get f in terms of a and b? I don't think this is going to work. I think that it's going to complain. Oh. Um. That kind of did what I wanted, I think. I mean, these two conditions here are not important. Those are ones we already assigned. This is saying that A is equal to um, lem of OF times this plus this plus this. I d I'm not sure this is actually doing what I want. Um, I mean, the, ex the equation I'm expecting to see was uh, that F is equal to square root of A squared minus B squared. Well, not, no, no, something like that. I think A squared. It's equal, I mean, there's some formula for f that we already had that is much better looking than this, uh, but this might actually be it. Um, okay. So, well, let's try this. Let's offer y, just in general. It's thinking. I think it's thinking. One more time. Thinking. All right, let's make it a little bit easier. Let's give me y in terms of x, a, and b. Can you do that for me? Hmm. That looks like a no. Here we go. Whoa! Jesus Christ. This should not be that difficult of a problem, actually. Uh, what we're sort of working up to here is a list of equalities that we could theoretically unfold into anything we want. Give me anything in terms of anything else. So that's the hope here. Uh, it's not going very well at the moment. Uh, of course, we only have right now like a couple of equalities here. And I get the feeling that maybe this was a, these are these are essentially aliases. We're, we're using these as aliases. This might be a bad idea. We might we might want to fix um, we might want to fix. Th oh Jesus Christ! Wow, that's that's bad. Okay, so why are we going to continue on this um, sort of insane road to stupidity? Um, and I guess. Okay, let's let's make a little bit of a change here, which I hate doing this quickly. Um, I think for these ones, we'll say that len of f just goes to f. 
uh, len OB just goes to because these are these are not really equalities. These are just shortcuts. So I think we can get rid of. Um, uh, I think we can we can make those just transformations. We don't have to make those. Uh, um, we don't have to make these necessarily uh, into into uh, equations. And I think even this one's pretty lame. Okay, this one's this one's definitely important. This is the one that sort of tells us uh, that uh, this is the sort of the equation of the ellipse that says uh, the distance between x, y, and uh, you know for any point on the ellipse and the sum bet between the two is equal to two times a. Um, same thing for b comma zero. And I don't know if this is a separate equation, but I think this will let you get. Um, this is going to be 0 comma bb, uh, 0 comma b. Again, th those are values of x and y, but I mean, they're sort of, uh, they're sort of, that's a special value that we want. Uh, we don't need to do that for a, and by the way, this is also true for negative b, but I don't think we need that either. So let's see what this does, if, if we can get it to, um, um, not revert to backup, format, insert. Uh, view, evaluation, restart session, delete all output. That's not quite what I wanted. Restart session. I probably will get some sort of weird warning that says, yes, I do want to restart session. Okay, and then we'll get Mr. Wolf Guy up again, which may be the worst part of this whole thing. Okay, so I don't know why all this got this back, because I guess I want to just delete that too. But that's okay. We can, uh, so now let's go ahead and do this. I, don't, I still don't think this is going to work, by the way, but but it's well, it's different, so that's always exciting. Okay, this should yield no output, so that's fine. So now I guess we're going to say solve. Wait, are we in another? Nope, still want to be in here. Do not want this. Okay. Uh, now I want to say, oh man, this thing is freaking annoying. I think I'm going to do shift, or if I do shift, it's going to try to evaluate. So solve um, rels 4f given a. Oh, shit, shit, shit. That's what you have to do to reduce here. There might be a better way of doing this. The problem with this is it's going to... Whoa! A is not a valid domain special. Okay. Um, is that what I want? Reduce... That should not do what I want at all. Um, it's not a quantified system of equations. Well... Yes, it is. But okay. I, I think you don't like the second prime. Okay, so this is this is what rels is. It tells me. Oh no, it's not. God damn it! Need a comma there. Let me go ahead and put that back in here. We do still need commas in our lists. Okay. So now, solve rels. 4f in terms of a and b. And I don't think that's going to work. Um, well, yes. Now Rails actually is a list. So, um, by the way, this is our... Uh, we're not going to do Pomodoro tonight, so... Um, I don't know if that's good or bad, but we're going to try to keep going here for a bit. Alrighty. So let's make sure Rails is now, in fact, a, a list. Which it should be. Um, that's a list of equations, dude. Um, reduce rels, give me f in terms of a and b. Mm. Well, um, That's 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 not cool. 
Wait, wait, there exists A and B such that? Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. Not what I want. How about F in terms of A? God damn it. Assuming there's a variable to eliminate. Well, no. Well, let's do this then. Let's, let's, if we're going to eliminate variables, we want to eliminate, I want F in terms of A and B, so I'm going to eliminate X and Y. Um, yeah, doesn't like it. Oh, shh, sh do I mean flatten? I do mean flatten. Um, so in fact, that probably needs to go into the main loop of the body, too. So give me rels in terms of, give me f in terms of everything but x and y. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not helpful. I'm not seeing anything. So I don't know why this is happening. Let's see if we can say solve uh, flatten rails in terms of, uh, and we will put that flatten back in there before I forget. Uh, so let's see what this says. F equals what? Mm, it's not looking too good. And I think we can do this flatten without too much trouble here. Okay. Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, so actually I'm sort of building this up as a question for a Mathematica stack exchange, uh, saying given all this, um, what can I derive from this? So let's see what we know here. Um, so be careful here, let's see. Uh, the sum of sum of distances f just for any point is 2a same thing for point b0 as special case um, and then let's go back here so this is we've very minimally now we've done some very minimal stuff here um, um, So in theory, this right here should give us y in terms of of x, and this should give us f in terms of a and b. Uh, so this, if this is all true, we, we should be able to get f in terms of a and b. Um, and by the way, the last element here is going to just be, um, just so we can put the... Um, just so we can put a comma at the end of our very last one, we'll put true at the bottom. So, so again, I'm already lost, confused. No, 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 I don't want to cancel anything yet. Don't want to do that yet. Um, okay. Let's go and do this. And then the trans we might not actually keep. That's, that's okay, though. So here we go. Here's our relations. Oh, shoot, I think I have an extra little uh, thingamabob here. So that's, that's not good. Let's do that. True has no opening. Well, okay, because once again, this was not intended to happen. And in fact, all of these need to be merged. Yeah, you almost don't want this to work. Sorry. This is, this is just really ugly. Okay. So... Da, 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 da. Oh, no, I do need that then. Okay, sorry. I, I needed it, but I forgot I needed it because it got confused. All right, cool. So these are three conditions that we have. Uh, now the question is, from these conditions, can you give me f in terms of a and b? Um, 
And the answer appears to be no, you can't. But I mean, you know, it's. Um, and that makes me unhappy. And I'm tempted. Yeah, I was tempted to say we could take the square roots, uh, the squares of some of these. Um, so, for example, this would become 4 uh, b squared plus f squared equals equals 2a. I think the absolute values are throwing it off a little bit. Um, unfortunately, I think they're also necessary, so I don't know if we can get rid of them. Um, and if I square this, we'll still have a middle term here that's very ugly. So I can't say the square of the sum of the squares of the distances is not the same as the square of the sum of the distances. Um, so we, we don't have that. So uh, in this diagram, we don't have that. Um, we have this squared plus this squared equals this squared. Um, and so this distance squared plus this distance squared is not the sum of the squares of those distances, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, what else? So this is not starting off well at all. Um, I still think there's something here. I still think there's something here. Um, so I'm going to continue with this, and it's going to be a huge waste of time. At the very least, I should be able to maybe write these as, um, yeah, no, maybe, who knows. Okay. Yep. All right, we might be able to re rewrite these as formulas at some point. Okay, but so now we have uh, very little information right now. Uh, we have da 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 we have this, this. Um, we should know that x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is 1, um, which, let's see, does that actually come out of here? Um, I think it does, ah, uh, shit, that's it, because I mean, we can solve for f using this, so using the second, um, so, I mean, you know, we can do this. Um, solve rels 2 in terms of f. And that should actually work because um, that shouldn't be even too. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. And a. Okay, so we do know a greater than 0 and b greater than 0. Um, I don't know if that's going to accept that. Let me, let's try it real quick. Now, I don't know if that's going to help it solve that or if it's going to consider that to be, un yep. When the parameter values satisfy the condition B greater than zero solution is used with Jesus fucking Christ. Um, oh, 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 hang on. Rails 2 is just this thing now. So let's call these things conditions. Um, and what I really want to do is just say this. Solve rels for f, all of them together. And see, that's there's. it's not the case that there's no output. That's That's the problem. I think I will call those things conditions. Um, I mean, they're, they're true, but... Uh, all right, let's see. Notes, short names for lengths, conditions. Um, A is greater than zero. Uh, sorry, B is greater than zero. A is greater than B. 
F is greater than zero because it's in length. Um, X and Y are both real numbers, although we don't know that they're positive. Okay, so we have this. Okay. So then we have this and this. And let's go ahead and do this. And it's still thinking, so let's go ahead and kill this. Uh, Jesus Christ. Okay, so we'll do this. Put that in here. That's interesting. It, it seems to think I wanted multiple cells. And is that because I don't, I did sort of cut and pasted them as multiple things? I, I, the new lines confused it into thinking I'm doing multiple things. So I don't, it's not what I wanted, obviously. Um. And I want to merge it with this cell too. Yeah, this this could get very ugly. And then hit return. Well, that's not going to do anything. So we want to say solve rel uh, rels two four uh, f. This should actually give me an answer like it did before. See, that's what I was looking for. Uh, that is f in terms of a and b. And I don't think I can do this. I don't think I can say conditions and rel2 given f. That might confuse it. Um, it's not a gypsy fucking piece of shit. It is, but it doesn't know that it is. So anyway. Um, so if I say solve rels2 in terms of f, I can get an answer. And if I say subject to cons, I think I can get a slightly simpler answer. I cannot. Given that... Or, oh, I guess that would be like for simplify or something. But for the moment, let's stick with this. Let's let's we've got an answer here, uh, and because b is positive, this is just a squared minus b squared, uh, or minus a squared minus b squared. But f is greater than zero, so the only thing that actually works is this. So that's what I wanted. That's that's a good thing. But now, what if I say solve rels for s? The problem is, I think if we give it too much, yeah, it doesn't like it. Um, so not cool. So if I do. Solve this, simplify. Yeah, this this could be very ugly, but if it's workable, it's going to be. We can write a lot of stuff here, fairly usefully. So simplify sub subject to cons, and I think we should get. Um. Interesting. Um, because a is greater than b. And because f is greater than zero, the only the second condition really applies. But but I'm, this is at least somewhat close to what I wanted. Okay. So now the question is, what else can we do with this lovely diagram? Um, so right now we've just done some very basic stuff. Um, and I keep going back to this because now I want to say, can you give me? Um, Can you, from rels, give me x? Uh, and I don't know if that's going to work. Yeah, the, the problem, once again, is um, I'm giving it too much information. So I think from here we can get a, f there we go. Um, so this is good, and now obviously we have an f and a y in there, but um, but I think let's see. So this gives us x in terms of y, a, and f, but we actually know what f is. Um, So let's see if this will let us simplify. Nope. Um, so I guess what we want here is we want f in terms of solve 
rels2 for f, use that to replace the solution Jesus freaking Christ. Yep. Um, yeah, this actually does give us uh, x in terms of a, b, and y, which is what we want. And of course, we could do the same thing to get y in terms of a, b, a, and b. Let's see what this does. Yeah, much, much uglier than I thought, but, but, but it is ultimately a formula. Uh, and in fact, it's the correct formula, and what bugs me about it is that it is redundant. They have the same answer more than once. I think we could probably, um, like, delete duplicates on this. In fact, I know we can delete duplicates on this to get just the two answers that we want. And there are two values of y, of course, because there we go, there we go. So the technical thing that I'm doing here is, like, sort of technically correct. But it is extremely ugly. Uh, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. All right. So the next thing we want to do is maybe get this angle here, what we call ang FOP, um, which will, by the way, be the same as ang AOP. Um, and here's, I guess, where we're going to. Um, here's where we're going to start saying things like. Wait, why do I have this in its own set of brackets? That's just a condition. So maybe that's, so I, the flatten was sort of to make up for that mistake. So that's true, that's true. Um, angle FOP equals, uh, let's see. Well, let's see, this angle FOP um, which is the same thing with FOA, by the way, um, is going to have a tangent of, well, yeah, well just y over x, right? Opposite over adjacent. I mean, the only condition here is going to be if it p gets into the lower half quadrant, we would want the two-argument form of tan the arc tangent. But So we can just say here, tangent FOP is equal to y over x. Um, I don't know if, um, I can do a triple equal here, so we'll just call it, we'll just do this. Same thing. Okay. Good deal. Now we want, um, the tangent of, uh, we want angle AFP. Um, oh, sorry, what do we know about angle AFP here? Uh, it's um, the opposite is still going to be y, but the adjacent is going to be um, it's going to be this minus this. Okay, so it's going to be um, the tangent AFP and I'm angle FAP. So that's kind of funny. And actually, I actually meant AFP, so it's not funny. Uh, no Pomodoro today. Well, tonight. Uh, AFP. And that is going to be equal to... Um, opposite is going to be Y. And so the adjacent is going to be so Y over... And then X minus the distance OF, which we're calling F. That's certainly true. Um, and I mean, there's a whole bunch of other things we can do here that I'm, I'm trying not to make them too irrelevant to what we're trying to do here. Um, so now we can talk about the area of triangle OPF. Uh, let's see. Okay. Alrighty, let's see. 
I'm already deep into Poopyville, I think. I'm not really happy with this anymore. Uh, we could certainly measure this distance, but I'm not sure that's actually relevant in any way. We have this angle, we have this angle. We can get this length is just going to be uh, square root of x squared plus y squared, which is not interesting. And this, uh, this length might be more interesting, but I'm not sure that it is. Um, we now need, I guess, sort of an abstract point, and we want to be able to say that the uh, area of the ellipse from that point to the right is, is given by something. Um, I want to be careful as how do I define this point. I want to call it C, maybe? Um, the area right of C for some, any given C? Because um, then we can get the area, we can get the area of, uh, of this by looking at, you know, where... Uh, once you go to the right of F, well, let's see, if this... Actually, hang on, if this point's over here, uh, then what you're integrating to find this area is da -da 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 up to here, up to P, and then from P on you just go to the, uh, uh, you go to the, uh, the, to A. Um, let's see. And with this, with this situation here, you want this area, you have to go from P to F, then plus the, uh, the area to the right of F. Okay, um, let's see. <laughs> um. Okay. Let's take a look at this again. Uh, ten this, ten that, ten that. Um. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to see if there's any other sort of useful thing we can do here. I guess we can get the area of OPF as a triangle. Uh, OPF. Um, yeah, that's a triangle. And that has a, uh, a base of F and a height of an altitude of Y. So it's f times y over 2. And then let's get the area of, I don't even know if we need this one, AOP. And I guess if I'm going to do this with O as the center, it's going to be OPA. Opa! Opa Gangnam Style! That was probably offensive. Okay, and that's going to just be um, same height, y. Um, and the area is going to be uh, base is going to be A, so it's going to be A times Y over 2. Okay. Um, lots of cool stuff we're doing here. And what else do we want? We have this area. We have this area. This area here, APF, is going to be the, the subtraction of those two. I don't think I care about that, though. Um, now, for any... So I think we can talk about the area to the right of P on the ellipse. Oh, uh, that's probably not going to be right. Um, we need to talk about the area for an arbitrary point uh, to the to the right of the t for an arbitrary x to the right of the ellipse. So I think we definitely need to introduce a new point here. Um, we'll call it C. We'll make it arbitrary. Um, Uh, and see, the weird thing here is going to be that's going to be more of a formula now, um, because that is that is it's going to be true for an arbitrary. P I mean, I guess p is an arbitrary point, so we don't really care. But um, um, yeah, we we actually might want to make this a formula. So let's go ahead and do this. Create a point, we'll call it C. 
cool. It is C. And then we're going to do something that's so horrible that it's going to require doing this. Okay. Um, it's going to require actually making this a little bit up here. Okay. So we want um, x greater than c. That's that's actually whoa. Sorry, x of c. Um, x squared over nope. That's one thing this is not good at, which is uh, over um, a squared. And I don't think I've defined a in this case. Well, actually, how about I hang on? Um, yeah, I think it's just going to be um, x of a plus. No, we're, we're, we, I know what I'm doing. Plus y. Hang on. Y squared over um, B, which is going to be Y of B, is less than 1. Mm, no. Not what I meant. Not an if statement. Too bad you can't bring this up in like a little pop-up. Okay. That was not an if. That was a... That's not what I meant to do. Wait, what the hell? Um, all right, we're going to make you really big. Okay, no. First of all, there is no if statement here. This is not an if. It's this. And, and that. That's what I want. Um, well, that's kind of getting closer to what I want. And, uh x squared plus... I'm pretty sure I meant to put squares down here, didn't I? Booyah almost. Uh, we also need to restrict um, y is greater than 0. Okay. Okay, so now this is, um, let's see, I could probably change the color of this, but uh, I definitely want to change the, the uh, trans, make it more translucent. Um, what is the label of this thing? Yeah, we don't need to show that label. That's not helping us any. We also don't need to show the frickin' dotted lines, but let's see if we can get um, line thickness, none. Oh, cool! Line opacity, much less. Whatever the hell. It's one right now. I think we want to move it way down to... Uh, no, sorry, it's line opacity, isn't it? That's what, that doesn't really matter. Um, I want the uh, area opacity. Okay. So line style, filling, standard, dots. No. Probably we're going to have to go with weaving. Oh, God. Standard. <laughs> um, inverse filling. No. Line... Doesn't matter because we actually have no lines at all being displayed. Uh, color uh, and opacity of the color can be like way down here. Too little. Okay, and we want to make it like red. I don't know why. I just like red. Pink. So I kind of like that. Um, and so this is just going to be for any value of C. Uh, area to the right of C. 
is going to be, let's see, the area to the right of C is going to be the integral of, uh, the integral of this height, which is, um, no, it's y of x. Um, but there's a simpler way to say it, basically. Uh, area right of C. I guess we could say area between C and D, couldn't we? If we really wanted to. Well, okay, that's area right of C minus area right of D is area between C and D. So this is this is the um, integral of y of x, where y of x is equal to. See, this is where it gets ugly because we we d we do know what y is in terms of x. We we can get that um, from all this crap. We can get that. I think we did get that, didn't we? We might have. Um, yeah, here it is, y in terms of x. Um, okay. Now, now, this is where it gets fun. Um, we only want the second solution because that's one we really care about. And that is not true. I want, because it's 1, comma 2. It's that sucker. And we want y given that. Okay, that's the y value, and we want to integrate that um, uh, uh, well, we'll just actually do a, a sort of a, um, yeah, we'll just do that. Uh, I think we can simplify that. And that's the that's the <coughs> that's the indefinite integral. Um, let's go ahead and see if we can simplify that with respect to our conditions. I'm sure, we can. Well, I'm wrong, apparently. Okay. Really. That doesn't simplify. By the way, another way to do this would be to uh, integrate it with respect to, you know, um, go from x to some number t to a, uh, because that's actually gonna, what's going to happen with the, um, we're going to get subtraction. Um, but this is a pretty good general integral to have in mind. So let's go ahead and keep this. Um, a squared, b squared, well, I mean, this might not be simplifiable. I don't know if that's really an improvement. In fact, I think it's not. Because I do kind of like having the square root of... I like having this, because this is a distance between x and... x and a. Um, well, it's not, but I mean it's close. Alright, so let's go ahead and get this in input form. B. And this will be something that's a little bit separate from, um, so even though I said we weren't going to do this, we, we do have this one formula. Um, okay, so let's see. I'm going to be very really vague about this and say area of x, a, and b is equal to this sucker, and I, I'm pretty sure that is uh, only, uh, only applies to the, yeah, okay, we're good. It does only apply, <coughs> excuse me, uh, to those three, uh, variables. Okay, we've got some nice angles going here, we've got some nice triangles going here. We have this nice area going here, which I guess we don't really care about anymore. So we will probably get rid of, let's see. Yeah, let's go ahead and get rid of that. And we'll get rid of point C. And we have this angle. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so AFP, actually that might be the angle. We, we might need that. Um, area AFP, let me make sure I have that correct. <coughs> Excuse me. That's the area swept out 
Um, okay, careful here. The triangle AFP has a certain area, but what we're actually looking for is the uh, arc AFP having a certain area. So I think I think we're okay because we have not said yet. Um, We have not yet said that the. But we have not yet specified whether we're talking about an a, a triangle or an angle. Okay. So here we have. I guess the general case here would be. Um, this area here would be. Let's see. Ta -ta -ta -ta, the area from. Okay, so. So the general case here would be, ay yeah 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 yeah. FP. It's always going to be. Oh shit. It's always going to be a triangle. Um. And it's going to be this triangle that goes to here. Plus. Um. from the thing down to P. Uh, okay. So let's... I think at this point I'm willing to draw a... Um, um, there was a distance thingy in here, wasn't there? Somewhere. Um, I think we can just do this as a line, probably. Um, from F to P, and once again, I have messed up what I mean by line. I mean, of course, a line segment. Um, because lines are infinite, and we don't need that. Okay. And we don't need the name for this, so we'll just change the settings to not name it. Well, I mean, it has a name. It's FP, but... We don't need to, to give it a specific name. Um, so this area here that we're looking at, AFP, uh, we're basically saying it's going to be... I'm trying, I'm trying to get a good general sense here of what this is. Um, so it's going to be basically, let's see, this area down uh, to here. That's actually kind of complicated. Um, okay, so I think we can do this as a difference. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, So I think if we go for the area A, O, P, or P, A, O, and that's like the, um, the area from the, you know, the whole thing, um, can we do that? Because that's going to be a much more generic uh, case. And it still won't work for, well, let's see. So if we have, okay. Um... Yeah, I think that's going to work a little bit better. Although I'm still not sure what happens when it goes over here. Because then the area is going to be like, da, 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 and this whole quarter thing here. That might not be as ugly as what we're looking at right now. So let's go ahead and get rid of this line. Delete, be gone from this place. And now let's just look at uh, line segment going from here to here. Um, and we're going to not need that name. Not going to need that label. And so here it's actually pretty, um, let's see, we can put the point here that is going to be P of X. Um, I think if we do this as a drop line, so we have this triangle plus the, the area that's very clearly just all ellipse after that. So I think we can do that. Let's see if we can get a um, line segment goes from here down to now 
Now here I've got to make sure that point C um, yeah point C is going to be is going to be um, P of X so X of P comma zero so it is going to be on the X axis but okay and G is going to be segment PC, which I think is okay. So I think now if I move, uh, we don't need this name though. Okay. So now I think if I move P, this thing's going to this thing's going to behave correctly. Yes. Um. Yeah. The only problem is once we get over onto this segment over here, um, the area is going to be uh, we're going to be going from here to here to here to here. Let's pretend that's not going to happen, though. Let's look at this case for right now. Okay. Uh, where C is arbitrary. Um, no, it's not actually. It's, it's equal to... Um, uh, C is going to be equal to... Um, X comma zero. And I'm almost tempted now to put in a... Um, I'm almost tempted to put it in like a Y sort of have this you know drawn out to like the Y axis, and call that uh, call that D equals zero comma Y or something. But this is actually good. Um, ah, okay. Because now we can talk about the area of arc AOP, and this label maybe needs to be like down here. And this thing needs to be down here. Okay, so we can talk about area OAP, and then to get area F, AFP, we have uh, that area minus triangle uh, OPF. Um, did that make sense? We can get this whole area here. I guess we should start. We should start uh, coloring these areas. Um, and let's see. We have this, this, the other thing. Yeah. So I think we need one more line segment here between F and P. Okay. And now we can talk about, oh, let's see. <coughs> let's get some areas going here. Um, I think the easiest one of these, which doesn't necessarily mean it's the best, but the easiest for me to do right now is um, x is 0 is less than x is less than uh, X of P um, uh, and is that actually a, that is a triangle right yes we've decided that is a triangle and and um, now I gotta be careful this to the right of this line uh, we have um, y over x. Um, Jesus Christ. <coughs> we have um, x. No, y is less than y of p over x of p, and I'm almost sure that's not correct. And for some reason, this is not being nice. Well, that's interesting. Over x of p. That is not what I meant. I'm almost sure I meant it the other way. That doesn't make sense, though. Hang on. 
and y over x is less than, that's probably what I meant, uh, okay, no, um, greater than? I can't be right. That can't be right. Um, okay. Let me actually think about this for a second here. Uh, so if you're on this line, you have the property that um, y is equal to uh, the slope of this, which is py over px, or yp over yx. Um, <laughs> this is actually correct, I think. Um, maybe I need to say it like this. Maybe I can't make a statement like y over x is something. I need to make it more fundamentally about just y. Okay, that's good, that's good. Um, and I, of course, in this case, I think now, now we're getting there y is less than that. And y is greater than zero. Good deal. I don't think we need all this other crap here, but we can probably fix that in post. Well, let's go ahead and do it right now, actually. The, um... I don't care about the color of the style. We don't need the uh, lines being shown at all. We just need, and we don't probably need the um, label, and that is good then. So we have uh, this, uh, there's that area here, and then we want this area, and then we want this area here. We, we kind of want to make them, um, I, I don't know if I'm going to call them like blue, I mean we can just call them by their names, I guess, by their colors I guess. Um, Let's see, so we want this one here. <coughs> um, my kingdom for flood fill. Okay, so here we want um, x is greater than um, x of p. We might run into some issues with this. Um, and, uh, no, 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 no. And, and, x is less than x of f. And, and, the, the real condition now, which is, oh, I guess y is greater than zero if we're going to be, um, and, and, um, so let's see here, we have uh, that slope of that line, the formula for that line is uh, something, 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 uh, let's see, and y is less than, um, yp minus x, f of, oh Jesus Christ, mm. And it starts off as being less than, so this is um, pretty basic here. But then we have to minus off the, sl the slope of that line, or actually add the slope of that line because it's a um, uh, because it's a negative slope. Um, and the slope of that line is going to be rise over run, which is um, py over yeah. Um, y p times x, which is not going to do what we want. Um, the slope of that line is going to be, uh, rise is going to be negative y p, the run is going to be the difference in the x's. So that'll be um, x p minus x f times, oh hang on, that is a times. 
Nope, not quite what I wanted. <coughs> okay. Uh, why is written zero? Why is less than? Um, I. Uh, when x is equal to to um, p of x. Uh, let's see. That's the x-intercept, the y-intercept rather, um, of the line. No, it's not. It's um, so the x-intercept is is f comma zero, but um, or x of f, I guess. Uh, but the y-intercept is not this sucker. It is um, well. Let's see. I'm trying to solve my head, which is just amazingly stupid. Um, God damn it! Let's see. Can I? Can I? I mean, should I? I can. I, the question is, should I? Is that what I meant? And I'm almost sure the answer to that is no. Nope, that's not what I meant. I'm gonna have to do some math here in just a second. Um. Okay. So to be less than that line, and that line goes through px, py, for t, uh, it has a slope of blah, it has an x-intercept, oh, damn, I'm going to have to do some math here now, I'm trying to avoid that. Um, but there might be no way of avoiding that. Okay. And then the third area we're going to want to draw is basically this area here. And then we can talk about how we split up. The problem here is when we do this, uh, we have sort of a, a flipped situation where that one triangle is inside the other triangle. And I, I think we can handle that case too, uh, but it's a little bit different. So let's go ahead and not, let's go ahead and figure this one out separately. And then I guess the hardest one's going to be this area here. Um, I it's going to be basically, uh, let's see x is greater than p, it's to the right of this line, and it's still within the ellipse. So I guess we can say the ellipse condition, yeah, I guess we can say the ellipse condition is something we could actually just put in there and then, and then add to it since we're just creating more and more conditions. Um, Let's see. Oh, you know, we might be able to come at this condition from the x position of it. So x has to be greater than uh, this and less than, um, uh, yeah, that might be the way to do it, actually. All right. So x is greater than p of x, well actually hang on, x is greater than, I think we can just get rid of all this now, x is greater than xp, um, and then as this line goes down, um, Okay, x is greater than um, so when y is zero, x has to be greater than um, I'm sorry, x has to be less than uh, when y is zero, x has to be less than uh, than x of f, which is this. Um, Rather, it's this. Okay, good. That is correct. Um, but then as it goes up, it has to be less than, so this is going to be like minus um, y times. Um, and so y is p, so. y of p 
Um, okay. So when we're at PY, we want it to be um, the difference in the x's. So it's going to be y of p minus um, no, 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 no. So when wha this is zero, yeah. So this is going to be y times all right, y times x of p. Um, minus, come on, we don't need that. Oh, I see that parentheses is for something else. <coughs> this is clearly not what we want. Uh, y times x of p, so no. Um, all right, so x has to be less than x of f. Um, um, minus as y gets higher and higher um, I think this is just x of f minus x of p uh, unless I mean x of p minus x of f divided by um, y of p yeah not even close. <coughs> um, but I think we're close, actually. I said not even close, but we are close. Um, okay, so when y is 0, this is just going to be x is less than x of f, um, which is kind of okay. And when y is equal to uh, y of p, this is going to become x of f minus uh, this, which becomes x of p, which is correct. So I'm kind of confused as to why this is not um, giving me what I want. I mean, we also need the condition that x is greater than um, x of p, but that's a different condition entirely. Uh, so let's see. When y is 0, this says x must be less than, this all goes away, um, x of f, which means it's to the left of here. And when y is equal to p of y, uh, y of p, this, these cancel, and we get x of f minus x of p plus x of f, so I actually have these backwards, because I do want it to be, uh, these to cancel. So this may be good. Now we just need the other obvious conditions, which are, um, uh, y is greater than zero, and x is greater than, um, x of f. I mess something up there. Uh, so x is less than that, and y is greater than zero, and I meant to say it's less, greater than x of p. Ta-da! I'm so smart. Okay. Okay, cool. So we have, uh, and again, we're going to style this so it's not showing anything stupid. Um... We don't need a label. We do not. Oh, uh, color's fine, but we just don't need um, fix object style. Don't show the lines. Just show the area. Okay. Okay. So now the thing we need to do is the um, now we need this area over here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um. But. First, let's declare let's sort of something really simple. Um, x squared over, nope. That's not what I meant. x squared, I guess it's shift. God damn it. There should be a way to get from x, all right. x, nope, caps lock. x squared. Nope. How the hell? Uh, is it just the down arrow? X squared down arrow. Nope. Shift return. Nope. So how the hell do I do this? X squared divided by. I guess if you hit the cursor, it works. Uh, over a squared, which in this case is 
uh, x of a squared plus y squared over um, y of b uh, y squared over over y of b squared is less than 1 and that's exactly what I was going for. Um, <coughs> um, okay. So what's interesting here is, well, because this is not really opaque, um, I guess I need to still limit it to say that it's greater than the line. It's basically going to be the inverse of this condition here. X has to be greater than the, well, okay, so we might as well say, okay, and, and, x greater than x, f, minus y times x, f, minus x, p, quantity, over, mm, nope, not that much of a quantity. Delete that. Undo. What the hell? Give me back my thing. <sighs> okay. Really? I can't control Z that back. I can't undo that. Apparently not. All right. Frustrations. Um, all right, x squared over, now of course we could just declare this, okay, so a is going to be uh, x of point a squared plus y squared over uh, y of b squared is less than 1. We're just going to leave that. Whoa! That's... That should be an area, dude. That's... No, that's equal. So, why is this not... Uh, how about greater than one? X of A, Y of B, less than 1. Well, maybe we just have this set funny, so let's go ahead and... Um, no, that's not what I want. No, that's not what I want either. Inequality. There we go. Don't show the label. Um, don't show the lines. I do want to show the inside, though. Inverse... Uh, what if I do dots? Oh, cool. Okay. Standard. And I guess the co oh, here's why. The color needs to be... Oh, I don't know. Let's make it a nice... Nope. Oh, I have the opacity set to zero. That's why. But we can, we can fix that. Shiny. Um... I guess one... Well, shit. We already have red. We'll just make this green. That still doesn't look great, does it? Uh, we can't make it white because that doesn't look like anything. Purple! I think that's what we had before. Okay. Alrighty, so we're going to go ahead and keep that. Now, what we're going to do next... Oh, come on. Behave. Okay, it's getting a little bit ugly here. It's getting harder to move. Um, we probably don't actually need to show that area. We just need to reference it in just a second. Um, so let's go ahead and not print that area. But now we can say, because that area has a name, we... C Whoa! Where did my frippin' ellipse go? God damn it. We do want to show the ellipse. Okay. Um, so now all we have to do is basically say um, P 
Nice. And, and. Um. X greater than X of F. Not done yet. Um. Minus Y times. I think we're going to have to just basically copy from here now. Uh, minus Y times. Uh, X of F minus X of P need parentheses here over um, Y of P and also then Y greater than zero but that's just a sort of stupid condition okay I'm really happy with this I want to save this before I, f before I screw anything else up um, um, ellipses. Okay. So now we need to tweak this a little bit here, but I think that's not hard. We don't want to show the label. Uh, we do not want to show the actual lines. Okay. And the color, I kind of like this color. I can't believe it. Okay. So now what we've done here is we've established sort of our three areas of interest. Um, the only sort of bad thing that's going to happen here is um, we're going to get this crossover here and we're going to have this crossover here. That is actually just freaking weird. That shouldn't be going out there. Um, so I think we need to limit this area a little bit more. Um, uh, oh, cool! We can change its definition here, which is actually probably easier than changing it over there. Um, um, what is our... I think it's just called P is the name of our... well, okay. What's our restriction to be inside the ellipse? Um, P. It is P. So then and and... So let's see what that does. So now when we do this, it does not go flying off out, out of the um, outside of the ellipse. Okay. So I think now the orange area is going to be the area that's the, the area we're interested in. Um, the only problem we're going to be having here is we're going to have like cases like this is the case I kind of like. This is the case I want. This is the case that's weird because we have um, because we have this negative thing here going on, and this is the case. This is the standard case that I kind of like, and in this case, um, I can compute. Okay, so there's the, the issue here is we have this other triangle here. Um, if we want to compute this area, we can't just go straight between zero and um, and the, the border of the ellipse because it's possible that um, so actually this we need to do a little bit more better job here um, yeah because it's possible uh, that this area well let's see um, okay I think we can find this area in, in many different ways, but uh, um, and let's see. Well, I think I'm fading out a little bit here. I not as long as a stream as I'd hoped, but we did get some stuff done. Um, and I think we can pick up from this point here. I do like this diagram, and I think we can maybe improve it a little bit. Uh, and then finally compute the area of this orange sector, which is what we want, uh, to talk about elliptical orbits, or maybe not. I, I really don't know at this point. Uh, thank you for watching the stream, and goodbye for now.